Well, 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 we meet again. Today on the Ben's Garage, I'm in my garage, working on the Evo, and boy do I got a project for all of us. Uh, but first, this lighting situation is garbage. You can't see a dang thing in the engine bay, so you know what? Boom. <laughs> We've got some video lights, awesome, to uh, light up our engine bay for us and we're gonna be changing the head studs. So I'm gonna be doing it kind of unconventional. Um, not so much unconventional that nobody's ever done it. I mean, hundreds of people have done it and it's tested and it's proven to work, so I'm not really worried that what I'm doing is wrong. I'm just avoiding having to take apart the entire engine block. So what's bad on my car is the head is actually lifting slightly when I pressurize the system with like 28 pounds of boost. That's what I'm currently running on this thing. Uh, since I've tuned it myself on E85, you know, I've got a, I, I'm looking at the knock and there's no knock, so I'm not really worried that that's the reason I'm, I'm getting detonation and the head's lifting. I just think I'm using stock head bolts running close to, if not, 500 horsepower. Whoopsie, just told you guys the secret, but uh, 500 horsepower on this engine and the head bolts have stretched. They're stock, so they're expected to not hold up that much. The head gasket though is, people have been running like 800 horsepower on these head gaskets, so I'm not really worried about that. I just changed the oil recently. It wasn't milky at all. My coolant, it isn't milky at all. There's no mix happening. It's just when I boost, I'm pressurizing my coolant system and it comes spraying out of my coolant cap here. I mean, you guys can see that. That's out of the way. You can see down in there that that is coolant residue, but it's not too big of a deal. As soon as I get these head studs in, we're not gonna have any issues at all. So I've got my video lights here for my stage lighting. Got my tripod right here. So we're gonna set this guy up and uh, get to work on this thing. So I've got an assortment of lenses as well. I'm hoping to get you guys the best look of the process of changing these head studs. Um, every time I look up a video, yeah, there's videos of this being done, but it's very generic and not very detailed. Uh, it's pretty much 10 o'clock at night. I'm hoping I can do this this evening and get it done in a detailed manner so that you guys can do it yourself and feel comfortable doing it and show you that the one by one method is actually pretty safe. So first things first, I'm gonna remove some cables. Got our throttle cable sitting right here. I just dropped the bolt. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the spark plug, the ignition coils. and where the harness connects to the coils. So, as you can see, it's getting pretty dirty in there. Um, when I get this cover off, I'm gonna be able to clean in here very nicely and uh, prevent any of this from eroding any more of this beautiful valve cover paint. All right, let's keep moving forward. All right, I'm gonna disconnect the O2 sensor plug. Just bring that cord out and just out of the way for now. Now we've got this harness almost completely out of the way. Looks like we've got some sort of vacuum line. Well, yeah, crankcase ventilation. We've got vacuum line here that we need to go. This guy can just come right off. Crankcase ventilation for sure. Top cover of our uh, timing chain plastic.
So now I can pull off the cam cover. And look at those beautiful cop cams, 272s, baby. So we can see, you guys probably can't, but my head studs are right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I can reach all of them without taking out the cams. This is why it's called the one by method, because I'm going to be removing one at a time and replacing and torquing to spec. Well, not all the way to spec. I mean, there's a pattern that I'll be following, but you guys will get to see the whole process. So, pretty excited for that. These cams look gorgeous. Very beautiful. All right, so I went ahead and removed the first stud that I was supposed to remove from right here. Um, it came out pretty easy. If I look closely at the threads, it's not showing any obvious signs of wear or whatever. These bolts are really designed different from the ARP ones, um, whereas the nut is permanently attached to the bolt. Uh, the AR ARPs, the nuts are separate, so you have to put the stud in first and then you screw the nut on. These only go into the block hand tight though, but you guys are about to see that right now. So I'm just using an Allen wrench because I can't fit my fingers down in there to get it hand tight. Um, so I'm not going to use any force, I'm going to make sure the threads go in perfectly. And it seems like everything's going smooth. And you'll actually be able to feel it hit the bottom of the block. Yep. That's it. Number one is in. Now I'm going to snug it up with my torque wrench. All right, the ARP head studs. The nut on top is a half inch. We're gonna get it finger tight. Let's go ahead with 65 here. Okay, I, could, I feel comfortable there. I'm gonna go 65 for the ARP the first round and now I'm going to uh, step up to the next stud. We're gonna remove this guy. There we go. They're very touchy on the angle that they come out of the block. All right, next stud is going in. Half inch, set at 65 pounds. And we're done with that nut and stud. So there's a special diagram that you should follow when uh, doing this sequence. I'll put this up on screen as an overlay so you guys can actually see it, but this is what I'm following here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm torquing it down to 65 foot pounds uh, for the first time. And then I'll go back through and because these are secondhand bolts, they're already pre-stretched. Um, so I'm going to do 65 and then 70 and then 75 and then 80 just to make sure they're torqued down to spec. And then I guess you do a 90 degree turn past 80. Alright, so I ran into an issue with the stud over in this corner. Um, 
I need a deep well 12 point half inch socket um, to get that stud on there. And I think it'll be good to have for the other studs as well because all I currently have is a short well and I definitely need a deep well to finish this job. And if we come over to my toolbox, you can see that other than what's out and that I'm using, I am missing my uh, half inch deep well socket. So with it being like 10.30 or 11.30 at night, I need to go to Meyer or Walmart and hopefully they have this socket. <laughs> ah, I hate not having all the tools for the job. So I was almost to Meyer, but I forgot my debit card at home. So now I'm running back home to go back and get my debit card, then head back out to Meyer and finish this job. And if Meyer has it, then yes! But if they don't, then I'm gonna be sad and upset that I have to stop for the night because the only auto parts store that's open until midnight, which is in 15 minutes, is about 20 minutes away. So, not gonna make it there. I look like an absolute mess in here right now, but you know what? I'm a mechanic today and it's late at night, who cares? Of course, the door they have open is on the complete other end of the store. So I have to walk through the entire store to get to the auto section. Hey, anything else? Anything else go wrong today? Tools, 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 tools. Well, I just realized I'm in the wrong section because I don't need automotive stuff. I need hardware stuff, tools. No, not this stuff. Oh, here we go. Maybe this is it. Come on. $26 for something like this. It's not even gonna work anyway. Well, their selection is slim and they don't have any 12 point sockets, it's all six point. So unless there's another section somewhere around, it looks like I'm running to Walmart. Thank God Walmart is only a half a mile down the road. Six point. Twelve point, but not what I need. Well, this is not looking good. I was even ready to purchase one of these big sets, but none of them have twelve point sockets in there. A twelve point socket. That is deep well. So, as you guys saw, Wally World did not have what I needed. I am currently in talks with my buddy Brian who lives 40 minutes away but is still awake at 12.30 at night. And he is checking his toolbox. He actually works for Chevy so he's got a ton of tools. He said you could seriously come down here if you wanted to borrow one. Well that is my last resort if I want to finish this project tonight and not have to buy another tool that I don't need uh, ever really unless I'm doing these head studs. So I'm going to go down there and borrow it from him. Here we go. This video turned into a vlog. So I hope you're enjoying this awesome video. I am if you can't tell. All right, well, we're back at the garage. I ended up not going to Brian's house because when he looked at his socket set, he actually didn't have a deep well 12 point half inch socket. He only had, uh, he didn't have much of 12 point sockets at all. Like, it, it, those are rare, those are specialty sockets, I guess. So, it looks like this project is done for this evening. It really saddens me because as you can see, I've got all my camera gear out here, I've got my lights, and I'm gonna have to throw the cam cover back on here so it doesn't collect dust overnight. Um, and then head to an auto parts store tomorrow and pick up a socket that I need. So until then, it'll be like a jump cut for you guys, but 
probably about 12 hours from me. So, see you then. Welcome back to day two of head stud install. Today I've got my little one with me. She's gonna run an errand to Harbor Freight so we can pick up the right socket, because as you guys know, we couldn't find it last night. And then, uh, that's it. We're gonna put this thing back together. Finish up this video for you. Are you ready, Hazel? Ready. All right, I was forced to get a half inch torque wrench and half inch deep socket, 12 point sockets. Because they don't make deep well 3 8 sockets. <laughs> Probably return all that when I'm done with it because <laughs> I do not need all these tools right now. And that was expensive. Let's get this job done. So my friends are saying, why didn't you get just an adapter? Well, Harbor Freight did not have step down or step up adapters, like a uh, half inch drive to a three quarter inch socket. They had three quarter inch drive to a half inch socket or quarter inch socket to three eighths drive socket. So yeah, that's why I didn't get the adapter. All right guys, we are back and ready to finish this job. So after yet again another trip to the auto parts store for socket adapters, I'm ready to finish this job. <laughs> I went to go start doing this and I don't have a half inch drive extension for the new half inch torque wrench. So what I'm going to do is just use the adapter with the old torque wrench, put this all back in the box and take it all back because I don't need it. Yeah. All right, now that all the bolts have been thread sealed and torqued to 75, we're going to go up to 80, which is the recommended torque specifications from ARP. Do the same pattern that we did before, and then we're all set. We can start putting stuff back together. All right, so before I reinstall the cam cover, I have to clean up this area where uh, the cam cover attaches to the head. It's got some leftover oil, and I definitely don't want it to leak right there, so that is where I'm going to clean up. It's in really good shape. There's no uh, gunk or anything on it, it looks like the previous owner didn't use RTV silicone for this gasket, which is great. He used an OEM gasket, so I can just reinstall that. And then you also want to clean around the spark plug holes, because there are gaskets there as well. And now on the cam cover, you want to inspect the gasket. None of mine fell out, so it's also good put in its place, and the spark plug gaskets are there as well. Everything looks pretty new. So it's been just a matter of putting stuff back together that you took off, hose clamps and whatnot, little uh, brackets that connect to the crankshaft, crankshaft cover, or camshaft cover, whatever you want to call that, valve cover, same thing. 
bring this wire back around. We've got a little bracket that goes here, and then we gotta put our coils on. Reconnect this hose, actually. We'll do that now. All right, before I put the cam, the spark plug cover back on, I'm going to make sure, I'm gonna start it, let it warm up to temperature, I'm going to give it a little bit of revs, and then I'll take out these spark plugs to make sure there's no oil leakage around the spark plug uh, gaskets. And also I'll be looking for oil leakage around the cam cover as well, all the way around. So here we go, first startup. So that I, I let the car warm up to temperature, gave it a few revs, I checked for leaks, and then I took it out and gave it full throttle a couple times. There are no signs of coolant escaping the system, which means the head is now clamped down successfully. Now I'm just pulling the spark plugs to make sure the uh, gaskets around the spark plugs are good to go and have no leaks as well. All right, I think this was a job well done. No leaks, we're good to go. All right guys, this will conclude this episode of The Ben's Garage. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun getting my hands dirty. That was the first time I've ever done head studs. I have rebuilt an entire engine before. It was a 7M GE Supra engine. So I'm familiar with working around motors, but that was fun. It was my first time on the Evo. I hope you enjoyed this how-to slash informative slash vlog slash running around like crazy video. Uh, so please hit the like button if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you're just stopping by. We've got plenty more videos and I got more how-tos and you guys will get to see the whole build of this car. It's, it's gonna be awesome. So thanks for watching this episode of the Ben's Garage. I'll uh, see you in the next one.